Welcome back. If I was one of those high energy YouTubers you often see on YouTube, I'd be entitling this video, Oh my God, my bedroom's radioactive. Only I'm a bit more laid back than that. Until I got out a Geiger counter, put it in front of the bedroom clock, and indeed, oh my God, my bedroom is radioactive. So I've got myself a Geiger counter. This is the Geiger Muller tube that picks up the radiation given out when the nucleus of an atom splits. And here's the counter. Let's turn on the sounder, reset the counter, and you can see the numbers scrolling up, which means there's quite a large count rate coming off the front of the bedroom clock. So let's do some experiments. I need to show you that nuclear radiation is all around us and to do that I need to remove the source of the radiation in my laboratory which is this clock. So let's take the clock out of the way and put it a long distance away from the Geiger Muller tube, reset the counter and you'll find that it will give just a few counts. Uh, these counts are known as background radiation and you get maybe three or four every 10 seconds. So what we'll do first is we'll measure the background count in the laboratory and then we'll bring the clock back. So a good way to measure the background radiation as it is so small is to do it over a minute. Normally you do it a few times on average, but today we'll just measure it over a minute. So I'm going to reset the counter, start the stopwatch and let go of both. And I'm going to watch the stopwatch and hold the counter after one minute and see how many counts we get due to the background radiation that comes into my laboratory. Whilst we're waiting for a while, um, the background radiation is caused by a number of things. Naturally occurring radiation in rocks in the ground, that's things like uranium ores and radon gas. Um, a tiny bit of nuclear fallout from atomic weapons use and atomic weapons testing in the nuclear industry. And of course, cosmic radiation from space but it's very, very low, so I'm really not worried about that from a safety point of view. But if we wait until the stop clock reads one minute, what we'll do as soon as it gets to one minute is we'll hold the counter and see what reading we get for the background count over one minute. So, four, three, two, one, stop. OK, so I've held the counter after one minute and you'll see that it's reading 16, which is quite a low count rate. 16 counts due to background in the minute. So what we'll do now is bring the clock back. So I've put the clock back and I've put the front of the Geiger Muller tube fairly close to one of the glow in the dark hands. And I'll reset the counter and start the stopwatch. And we'll leave it for a minute and we'll see what count rate we get. I'll turn the sounder on just so you can hear the clicks in the background. And whilst we're waiting, you might remember if you've done some work on radioactivity, there are three distinct types of radiation that you normally come across. Alpha, beta and gamma. Now, there's a radioactive material in the clock and we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute but that may well be giving out alpha, beta or gamma radiation. We can be pretty certain that it's not alpha radiation because the front of the clock is made of quite a thick piece of plastic and you might remember that alpha radiation doesn't go through plastic. So let's have a look at the clock and we're on 47 seconds now. So we've got beta and possibly gamma radiation coming through. So let's see how much comes through the front of the clock in a minute. Three, two, one, hold. So you'll see that the counter is reading 2,185. Now that's a very, very high count rate compared to the background count that we had. So you should really deduct the background count, but in fact with a number that high, we're not gonna bother. And in the nuclear industry, the count rates they're dealing with there are so high, the background count's absolutely irrelevant. But GCSE and A-level students, of course, would be expected to take a reading from the Geiger counter and subtract the background count. So when I first set this up, I was quite surprised just how radioactive the hands were on the clock that I've got. But what we need to do is find out, is it beta or is it gamma radiation? Some of you might remember that if we use a few millimetres of aluminium 
thin sheets of aluminium in front of the Geiger-Muller tube, then we can block the beta radiation. So I'm going to start the clock and the timer and see what happens. Now you'll notice that the beeps we're getting are much less frequent. This suggests to me that the thin sheets of aluminium in front of the Geiger-Muller tube are blocking beta radiation. Quite surprised by that actually because I thought what the clock would be giving out would be mainly gamma. Remember again it's got a plastic or some clocks have a glass face and that will certainly block all of the alpha radiation completely. So we're going to leave it for a minute as before so we can compare and see what count rate we get. But remember the count rate we're getting now is the gamma count because we've blocked the beta completely. So let's have a look at the stopwatch. And we've got 10 seconds to count down. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we'll hold. And the count's 293 counts. So we're getting 293 counts just from the gamma radiation. But we can do a test just to see that that really is gamma radiation. So let's do a test to see if we can block the gamma radiation. So I've got my absorbers back and in here I've got some thick lead. I've got a feeling that this lead's not even going to be thick enough, but let's put it in front of the Geiger-Muller tube, reset the counter and start the stopwatch. And you'll notice the counts have dropped considerably. What we've done here, of course, is we've blocked all of the beta and I'm hoping that we've blocked some of the gamma as well. But of course you can't block the background count, so really what's meant to happen now when we put the lead in front is the counts go down to that very low value we had of background. But it's pretty clear from what we're doing here that the gamma radiation from the clock, it, at least some of it, is strong enough to get through the lead and out the other side and we need a thicker piece of lead. What I don't want to do is put more lead in here and move the clock further away because then it's not exactly a fair test. But let's see how we've got on. So the timer at the moment is reading 45 seconds. So after 15 seconds, we'll press hold on the scalar timer and see how many gamma counts we got. So five, four, three, two, one, hold. And there we go, 204. So we were successful at blocking some of the gamma radiation. So when I first decided to do this demonstration, I had no idea the clock in the bedroom was quite so radioactive. You can read about this, and there's quite a lot of history behind all this sort of thing. But to make it a very short story, the hands on the clock were designed to glow in the dark. And unlike some glow-in-the-dark hands on watches these days, which you shine light on them and they glow for a few hours, the hands on this clock will glow persistently for many, many years. And inside there is a radioactive material. It was typically radium. And that radium gives out nuclear radiation, which causes a pigment in there to give out flashes of light. Some of you might know that that had to be put on the hands by people. And the workers were typically young girls and women who did this with paintbrushes. And um, the hazards to them were absolutely huge. And sadly, they all got horrendous cancers um, from the work that they did. And even the factories where they worked to paint the radium dials are still highly contaminated and highly radioactive. It's really a very, very sad story. But we know better now. So, radioactive clock in my bedroom. Rather more radioactive than I thought. It's unlikely you'll have this problem because modern clocks and modern glow-in-the-dark paints don't use radium anymore. So it's probably safe. This is really rather an old clock. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Music